Time to start automating how we receive invoices in our business. We're gonna take the data that we find here and have it automatically placed into a Google Sheet of our choosing. Simply by us leveraging Zapier and ChatGPT. Sound good? Let's jump in. Look who's back. Look who's back. <laughs> Welcome back, y'all. My name is Corbin and we're gonna be doing a very popular automation. What this automation is gonna do for our business is that anytime we receive an invoice, we're gonna be able to extract that data, we're gonna be able to analyze that data, put it into a Google Sheet and do whatever we want when it comes to that in our workflow. Let's go ahead and jump in here. As always, with these kind of videos, we're gonna go ahead and leave the automation in the description down below so you can add it directly to your Zapier account. Let's create our Zap. Zap creation. To start off here, we're gonna do a trigger of Google Drive. You may have heard of it. It is free. And how we're gonna structure this workflow is simply this. We're gonna have two major folders, invoice and alert, sheet made, obviously name it how you wanna name it. And then we're gonna have our relevant Google Sheet data. So in this video, we are going to be collecting the invoice number, bill to customer, services, due date, total. As you will see in this tutorial, you're going to be able to manipulate how we approach this to basically fit any use case that you deem necessary within your business. Two folders are going to be the invoice handler, where by the end of this video, all you will need to do is simply drag and drop your PDF into this folder and everything kicks off. And sheet made, this folder will make sense when we get to the automation. So let's go and start here with the trigger of Google Drive. Select trigger. With here, we're gonna type in Google Drive. We'll do the event here of new file in folder. Make sure to choose your account. Now make sure to choose a relevant folder. So for me, I have like a parent folder of YouTube videos that all my automation videos go into. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into this folder here and go to the relevant folder that's gonna be used in this tutorial, which will be invoice handler. This is the folder that I referenced right here that all we have to do is simply drag in that PDF file and zap your handles the rest. Hit continue. I went ahead and already added a dummy PDF or a dummy invoice. So we can go ahead and showcase how we're gonna pass this data through. I encourage you to do the same because with our dummy PDF here, we're gonna be able to basically manipulate it and use it in our automation. So we know at scale when we add a ton of PDFs, it works fine and is up to structuring of how we structure our invoices. So this invoice right here is a fake one from Stripe. Although if your name is James Brown and you live in Kentucky on 13030 Middletown Industrial, Hello. I don't know who you are, but if you exist, hello. <laughs> I also want to identify that in this invoice, I went ahead and took the extra step here to have two different types of services so you can get an understanding of how to approach this if your invoices are more complex. Let's get it. So with this piece of data here that we just grabbed, we're going to say continue with selected record. Our next step here is going to convert this PDF into a Google Doc so that our artificial intelligence can analyze it. To do so, let's go ahead and add another step here, which is going to be upload file from Google Drive again. Google Drive, action event, upload file, upload. With upload file here, we're gonna simply put in the file from our previous, like the one that we just added to the initial folder here, which will be file exists but not shown. The purpose of this step is that we actually have to convert this document to a Google Doc in order for this to actually be readable by ChatGPT later in this automation. So for example here, we can go and actually add a file name if we want to do so as well. So I can just go to do like data pool dash, and then we'll do the actual invoice name as well. So we'll do title here. Next, we actually have to be very specific on the folder we choose to upload this file to. Now, why this is important is we don't wanna create an infinite loop. If we come to our folders here, if I went ahead and placed this uploaded, this new uploaded file of the Google Doc into the invoice handler, it would just cause a loop. We don't want that. So we're gonna put it into the sheet made folder here. Click that, continue and test this step. Coming back over to our Google Drive here, we should see a Google Doc, boom, show up here. Now within the Google Doc, we have our invoice here. Your first thing might be like, Corbin, this looks horrible. What is this structuring? What are we doing here? Don't worry, when artificial intelligence reads this, it'll be able to understand everything contextually and it doesn't really care how the data is structured. Now that we have the relevant file as a Google Doc, we're gonna go ahead and reference that in our next step here. Let's go ahead and set up our next block here, which is gonna be code by Zapier. This is gonna allow us to extract the data found within that Google Doc. Type in code by Zapier. Here, we're gonna go ahead and choose run JavaScript. Don't worry. We're gonna provide the code, configure, and we're simply going to put in some simple code here. With this code here, our main purpose here is just to get the underlying data or text in this document. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we add the file text from that file. We have a ton of different options here, but as you'll notice, it says exist but not shown. So we want it to be shown. We're gonna do file text. With that, we're gonna put in these four lines of code. What you'll notice is that text associates with text up here. On top of that, you might be asking Corbin, what is this 3000? That's 3000 words. Therefore, if you have a really long invoice, then up that number. For now though, 
This should be sufficient and we should get the output of the text we need from that invoice. Continue, test step. And here we go. We got all the relevant text from that invoice. So let's let the fun begin. Now that we have the relevant information about that invoice, we're gonna add a chat GPT block here. Chat GPT, we're gonna do an event of conversation. Select your account. This is where we're gonna prompt. We're gonna tell artificial intelligence, do the heavy lifting. How much do you bench? <laughs> for now though, we're gonna choose a model of GPT-40 mini. We're gonna do a memory key of Invo Handler. Just for reference, this could be anything, but just so it sounds nice, we'll do Invo Handler. For now, everything else would maintain the same. We're gonna come up here to the user message. Here is the prompt we're gonna be using. So let me go and explain each little part here. Start off here, we give context. We tell ChatGPT what's going on here. So what's going on in this context is that we received an invoice for our company. Next thing we're gonna provide is going to be the invoice or more specifically the invoice data. So let's go ahead and add that in the parentheses here. Hit this little plus, come down here, run JavaScript. We're gonna do the result. So far so good. Now to the next point here, what do we want? Like what, what are we even talking ChatGPT for? What we want is this, the invoice number, the bill to, the customer email, services, total, and due date. So that leaves the question then of what do you want? Put it there, proceed. Optimally, you would go ahead and make sure that you would name it similar to the columns as that would make it more clear in the future where the data is placed. Also, this is just really good structuring for any context when using ChatGPT. Finally, format, don't have the titles of the categories, just output the requested variables. And the reason we say this is because of the fact that we already had the titles here. We don't need a repetition of invoice number and then the invoice number within the relevant column or row we're about to create together. This is sufficient, this is good, and we're using GPT-4 Mini as our model here, which is very, very comprehensive, very, very cost effective. So we're gonna continue here, test this step. And here is our result. Let's go to gut check it together to make sure this is actually correct. So the first relevant data point is the invoice number here. We end in 0003, not the below 007. We end in 003, correct. Second is, who is the individual? James Brown. James Brown. What are the relevant services? Website development, 500. SEO work, 250. Is that correct? Website development, 500. SEO work, 250. That's correct. Total 750 and November 20th of 2023 for due date. Total 750 and the due date is November 20th of 2023. That right there could be applied to any invoice in any context. Just proceed in that manner. We're good to go for the next step here. So the second to last step here is what we're gonna do is gonna do a format block. Because right now that data is gonna be one block, which isn't good if we wanna put it into multiple columns in a spreadsheet. This will make more sense. Hit formatter by Zapier. We're gonna go ahead and choose text. Continue. Transform. We are going to split the text here. With this, we're gonna put in the simple input of what we just got from chat GBT here, conversation. Coming down here to reply. What you'll notice is that within the chat GBT output here, notice how, zoom in please. Thank you, future me who's editing this. <laughs> what you'll notice is that each one is on its own line here, right? It isn't just one string or just one continued paragraph. We can take advantage of this. What we can do here is we can use a little bit of Zapier magic and do new line. And the way we do new line in this context is simply by putting new line structured in that manner. There's a ton of other ways we can do separators when it comes to Zapier formatter. Simply look up Zapier formatter in the documentation relevant to it. This is all we care about for now. Last most important step here is that we gotta make sure that we choose the option all as separate fields. Continue. And what you'll notice is this is gonna take one block of data and separate it into five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six allowing us to put it into that row for each relevant piece of information. Pretty good. Let's go to Google Sheet. With Google Sheet, we'll do the event of creating a spreadsheet row. Create spreadsheet row, choose your account. Go ahead and hit continue here. Let's go ahead and choose our spreadsheet. So for us, this is the spreadsheet that I showed earlier in today's video, where I was in YouTube videos, invoice data. Create your own, proceed. The worksheet is just gonna be sheet one. And with this, notice how we're basically being requested to provide data for every single point in that column. What's nice is that we've gotten to the point now where it's all structured. So watch how simple this is. Invoice number, text, output one, invoice number, bill two. Coming back down to our formatter here, James Brown, output two. So let me go ahead and put these all in. And it's really that simple, y'all. So we got the invoice number, bill two, email for the customer, services requested, due date, and we got the total. Hit continue here, test this step, and how do I say, boom. I'll make sure to leave this automation in the description down below with just one caveat. 
Right now, we can't share zaps with code blocks. So what you're gonna do simply is add a third little block there with the code you find in the description and proceed. And just so you can get reference of the entire workflow here, here it is. Take a screenshot. Well, that just about does it. Make sure you leave a like. It's completely free. Is it free, Corbin? Is it really free? It is free. It's just a click or maybe a touch if you're on your phone or iPad. Check out all these other videos found on Zapier's channel and I'll see you in the next video.